Better leave than that one. All right. Right now, just setting up for another print. And this time, the print is going to be orange. Biggest thing is making sure that this is adhered to this mat. Once I do my my vinyl rolls, which is very soon, I won't have to bother with this mat anymore. There we go. I think that's good. It should be stuck to it enough. Good enough. Load it in the cutter. And let it cut away. Let's see. And I want to send it. And I'm happy with that. Send it. All right. <laughs> I forgot about how loud that is. It's wicked loud. It's not here. Don't so forget to watch these ads. Canvas, the free design if anybody's even here. <laughs> Lauren, what's going on, guy? All right, see how bad this is. One, two, three and a half. Nice. I'll try to keep, I should keep this over here, though. The way I can actually see it. That noise in the background is too much. Mute the show. <laughs> It'll stop soon. Well, soon enough. I'm cutting a, uh, I'm cutting another Trans Am uh, Firebird logo out, but in an orange this time. Uh, so the Habao VT, pretty bad, um, pretty bad crash. A hundred thousand percent my fault. Uh, just as usual, I didn't try. I didn't want to crash. But it just, I did. And um, all I can say is it was 100% bonehead maneuver. Things were telling me to not rip it. And literally everything that I did, maybe within, without the exception of adjusting the brake, and even the brake I did wrong. I ended up finding that out like a couple minutes like into it realizing what I was doing was I was actually adjusting the brake curve that's what that was so I needed to go into some other setting to adjust brake but it still gave me brake so it didn't matter 
It was still giving me, you know, a, a good solid break. I think maybe based upon whatever speed I was at or, or whatever. But um, yeah, the the only bad thing was this piece right here. This this piece is broken, but um, I'm planning on just heating it up and maybe before I heat it up what I could do is actually put a little bit of super glue in there and then basically just put it in my vise and just kind of like have it rebent and then introduce some heat to it so that hopefully it will stay in place that's that's the only negative piece because this whole piece is plastic um What is that? What the heck is that? Do those pieces come out? No way they do. Are you kidding me? You know, I gotta tell you, the more and more I dive into this habao, the more and more I'm shocked. I didn't even realize those pieces. I thought that was molded into the plastic. Wow, so I, I did a, a significant amount of damage to this thing. Um, but still, things things are kind of okay. The, the pieces are probably wicked cheap to go ahead and replace. Um, oh, I snapped that off too? Oh, my God. It's still in the chassis. Oh, I just noticed that. I that cut is already done. Wow, that was fast. So I snapped that piece off too. I feel like I'm not going to really worry. Why did it stop? Oh, it is done. Oh, it didn't even cut. You've got to be kidding me. All right. Well, I'm not even going to waste my time with it. I forgot a setting and the whole thing didn't cut. So it made all that noise for nothing. Um, so where was I at? So I was at this Rorschach. What's going on, guy? So I'm at this piece right here. So... I guess technically I should probably replace this piece. I should probably replace this piece. I'm not going to replace the chassis. The chassis is fine. I was actually able to bend that. If you saw the video that I just did on that, uh, I was able to fix the chassis. I do have to flip it over, throw it on my vise, and basically bang uh, this little ear section down. There was a lot of stuff that I just was kind of overlooking. Uh, the differential itself is, is actually okay. It did get a little bit of mushroom right here, but I'm going to call that okay. And if anything, if I have to, I might put a shim in here. But the case itself, is a, it's a very stout case, so I'm not worried about that. Shocks are fine. Seemingly, literally everything else is actually okay. I don't know how or why other than the motor itself. I just, I don't understand. I suppose the, the flat spin that the thing went through, and because my screws weren't Loctited, um, I guess that's why they kind of like, that's why the, the motor like spun out. Like, I don't know. I really just don't know. I do know that, that it, it's, it's getting closer. Um, the spool is fine. My drive shafts are all fine. So my uh, rear drive shaft is fine. Both my outer dog bones are fine. So here's the outer dog bones. No, I'm sorry. These are the outer, outer dog bones to the wheels. These are totally mint. The drive shaft is mint. No issue. Um, I think the little bit of binding I was getting was just because the motor got, you know, shifted out of skew because it was loose in the, um, it was actually loose in the motor mount. Uh, shock tower is fine. Center brace, no issue. So basically, it probably hit that stone, I'm guessing, about 50 miles per hour backwards. Um, again, 100% my fault. Uh, sure. Sure, chauffeur? What's going on, guy? Thread strip? No, nothing stripped, man. Um which is crazy. Nothing, nothing is stripped. 
I, I think it's literally because I never, I'm doing some stupid stuff, but it's, but it's, it's a learning progress uh, process. It's like, the, like I've talked about, I've talked about this before. I'm no, I'm no speed racer. This is all a, this is all like a learning like thing with me. So I'm taking like some knowledge that I have of just other stuff and trying to apply it to this and it's working, but I'm also, I'm also like forgetting stuff like the, the most simplest of things. I even remember when I put that motor in there, I thought in my head, Oh, I should lock tight the screws. But then I was just like, nah, I think it's fine. I'm really not going that fast yet. But what I never did, though, was after all those consecutive passes that I've been making. And again, I think I realized that there was a crash I had that was off camera that you guys don't know about. <laughs> so this because I drive off camera, too. I, I don't record everything. But like I keep saying, I should I should like literally just even throw on a GoPro and just like record like I guess I can't even call it. I can't even call it B roll. Maybe we can call it C roll <laughs> because um, I don't know. I just, you'll just hear me like rambling and, and you know what I mean? People will complain about the video because they'll think it's like a video and it's like, no guy, this is literally some people just wanted to see like footage. So here you go. I'm just going to throw a GoPro on my head and that's all you get. That's the audio you're getting. You're not going to get, hey, this is RC Guy Garage. You're just going to get, bam, click, driving. Maybe me complaining. I might have to, like, <laughs> bleep out a couple things. I don't know. I'm actually really good with foul language. I don't I do not do any of that junk. Um, but I'm really, you know, I'm really tame. And if there's anything I need to edit out, I suppose I can edit it out. But, you know, some people complain about that kind of footage. They're like, ah, oh, what's the point of it? It's just like, I don't know. Because people have asked, like, hey, guy, we want to just see, like, the regular stuff, too. So, um, the, uh, how do I, how do I explain, am I upset with this? The smile on my face says no. I think I'm more upset with myself because that little inner voice that I'm doing now, that inner voice is the voice that you guys aren't hearing that, you know, sometimes is talking in my head. And I'm saying to myself, you know, like I should just, I should just take the car in. But I think because I was so hopped up with just wanting to, I've been dying since I, since I did the modifications to this, the only one thing that was, was uh, taking time was the battery tray. And literally Jenny's RC basically came to the rescue with that Arma uh, Mojave battery tray. Cannot believe how perfect that thing fits in there. Did I have to, you know, drill out some holes and stuff like that in the chassis? Yeah. Yeah, but it was worth it, though. I mean, look at this. I got I got my I used my gold screws. So it's got gold screws. I did my hole. Well, you can see it actually popped out, but I did my holes uh, for the little um, the location holes, which basically also kind of kept this tray kind of in place. Um I also realized with the fact that having a bad crash like that. So why does Arma have seven screws holding down the battery tray? Because four screws ain't enough, especially with a 6S brick. So that 6S brick, this Velcro and this battery tray held everything together. That's something else I noticed too. Look at that. I think I might have ovalized one of those... Uh, the, sh the lower shock end for it to be doing that. I think it's overlized because when you go on this side, there's nothing. So I'm going to have to pull that apart, find out what happened. It's literally almost like the, like if there was a ball in, in there, like it just snapped in half and just disintegrated. But I'm gathering that it's, it's probably just overlized from impact. The rest of the car is actually straight. Of course, I say that. Am I noticing something? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, wow. 
That shock actually got shifted. Check that out. It actually came off of the ball. All right, so see these washers right here? I put those washers on after the fact. Did focus on it? Not on my face. See those washers? I put those washers on after the fact. Look at that washer stopped the shock from popping off. See how it popped off its end? That's how bad of a wreck this was, man. That was no joke. That was no joke of a crash. 50 miles per hour backwards into a stone. And if you saw the, if you saw the video or you saw the stone, the stone literally upended. Like almost, it almost 180 degreed. Like all the way around. That's how hard of a hit it was. I When I first saw it, I thought like the stone just got hit. And then when I was watching the footage, I'm like, that stone didn't just get shifted. That stone literally got upended and almost 180. So that's pretty crazy. And then for the chassis really to only have that kind of damage to it, just right there, that's not too bad, man. The chassis, the chassis is literally what took. Come on, let's focus. How do you get in here? The chassis took took the majority of it. Just right there. I was able to rebend the chassis straight. And what I want to do is I want to obviously try to reform uh, that back piece of aluminum. Which it's only going to reform, you know, just it's going to reform enough. Um, I just, man, I am really surprised. Pins, the pins are fine. These things are nice and straight. Uh, the, the back, the back pin holder, that's not straight anymore. So I'm going to straighten that, that that'll be easy. Just put in my vice and, uh, hammer on it and that should be fine. We'll fix that. Um, this piece right here, just plastic. I'll throw a little heat on it and it's just like flex it, bend it back down. This piece, I probably should order another one, but because I want to just get out there and rip it. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna, gonna do what I said. I'm just gonna throw this in my vise and put a little like little super glue in there, and well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe just put it in my vise and just apply heat to it and let the let the molecules kind of rebend and reform. So, I think the whole the whole part about this is that even even though even though all this happened and and totally 100 my fault, I'm still smiling here. I'm smiling because not that I don't care. It, it's 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 teaching me. It's it's telling me that you know, hey guy, you've you've got to really start paying a little bit more attention. Start treating this like you know the automotive scenario. Now, when it comes to when I work on cars and clients' cars, it's a little different. I, I don't know why I'm not applying that to this. I do sometimes. I think I apply the mechanical ability where I hate instructions and I'd rather just, you know, figure it out, um, find out for myself kind of deal. Um, there are times when you do have to look at, you know, instructions, especially like when you're looking up torque specs and stuff like that. There's certain things that you got to know. You do have to like crack a manual, open up a book when you're looking up certain, you know, items, timing marks, just whatever, just, you know, certain things. Um, tolerances whatever what what can pass what shouldn't pass but um you know this is only rc car stuff so i think i'm giving it a little bit of relaxation or freedom so let's uh let's just get into fixing the rest of this car i already got the motor set and it's gonna bang out the chassis bang out that back plate hinge pin plate uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, like, literally, I guess that's it. So, if you're here, get your coffee. If you don't have coffee, get some coffee. Well, go ahead and grab yourself a nice, ice cold iced tea. I'm gonna have some coffee, I could probably use it. Oh, that's some good stuff right there. All right.
Might have to do a COVID and coffee tomorrow. We'll see. Because uh, I do want to get out there and rip it. What's the weather? For? Hey, Alexa, what's the weather for tomorrow? Tomorrow in Plymouth, there will be lots of clouds with a high of 58 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 53 degrees. Oh, man. All right. Well, I guess it's Mojave Day tomorrow. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to run the Mojave, but check this out. This body now almost looks brand new. This is this is probably the first time that I actually took the time and really cleaned the body. And I don't do this. That EXP is making me do this. Wait till you see what I'm gonna do to this Mojave tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the thing to gotta be careful with my words. I'm gonna beat it down. I'm gonna put the beat down on it. All right. So let's uh let's jump into this repair here. Don't forget. Hell yeah, brother! Check those out, huh? Come on, guy. Those things are mint. Hell yeah, brother. I even got them on the little ones. So I've been designing. I've been designing uh Size wise to actually fit this one's obviously a larger sticker what I realized about this one The larger sticker will actually wear down quicker uh, Just because you know depending upon how you're driving this the sticker will wear down faster um, This one right here is a tighter uh, It's drawn down more towards the rim so that at least you know as the tire wears down It's almost like a it's almost like a wear gauge so once you start like ripping off the the top edge of the letters that's kind of trying to tell you, hey, guess what? It's time to get some new hoons. So this is a dual purpose right here. When that thumb is gone, <laughs> when the hell yeah thumb is out of there, I guess it's time to get new hoons or turn these into burnout ties, which this was the first time that I've ever cracked or crashed bad enough to crack a, a hoon uh, rim. The, the rim was so impacted with like pine needles and stuff. So I am going to, again, these are not going to be a wheel that I actually use. So as a matter of fact, I should put an X on it right now just to make sure I, for some reason, if I, uh, this is going to be for a burnout because I need burnout ties. And usually I was thinking about just using my, my old ties as burnout ties, but this one's really not old. It's just now broken and ruined. So. I don't know where my paint pen is. Oh, there it is. It's way over there. All right. It's not like I don't already know, but I can go ahead and put a X <laughs> on this one so that I know this is a bad wheel now. Mitchell, what's going on, guy? Just jump in the chat real quick. Who's here? Gucci Skunk, what's going on? RC Ritter, what's happening, man? RC Master, what's happening? It's a, it's a light it's a light day today, huh? Only got 14 people in chat. That's that's all right. Uh, so another thing that I had done with the front of this that I never talked about was I actually did pad out the um, the front uh, bumper section here with uh, basically just stick tape and a layer of foam that I had, which actually now kind of, it doesn't allow the uh, front end of the, the car to compress anymore. So that worked out nice. But I do have to, um, I do have to re-release the uh, screws here on the chassis. So those things got um, shifted, but you know what? Before I do that, this uh, ESC got whaled on as well. So what I should do is get this out of here. And it was definitely a good idea to have that zip zippy tie 
on that ESC. Otherwise, this this ESC ESC would have literally just gone flying. So this was a this was a no good. So this did not work. Well, I mean, maybe it actually did work. It was just a pretty nasty impact that made it so it lost its adhesion. So. But. So that works. So now basically all I got to do is just put a little uh, cleaner on there, clean that off. It would be cool if I could actually figure out a better way to mount this, but I'd have to design a new plate or I'd have to bolt a new plate onto the existing plate. And I don't know if I, I don't think I really have to do that. I think I should literally just, maybe I should use the dual lock. Problem is, is that it's got holes in it. So there's really not much for it to grab onto. See how it's got like this giant cutout in the middle? It's all like, I think, weight savings and all that other stupid stuff or design or something. Um, ESC is fine. Motor is fine. Obviously, it did drive away, which was pretty cool. It was just limping pretty bad. It got to the point of where obviously, you know, I started hearing some gear carnage and I knew it was kind of time to stop. Your name is going around as the guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> the guy. You have to be old to understand that TV series reference. What TV series reference? That what did I miss? James George guy, what's going on, man? When I open, when I closed. <laughs> hey James, I I I can't I I can't thank you enough again. I can't thank you enough. Um, I'm still like been using this like that. Like I said, man, that guy right there that's in here. This this is his twenty million fluid that. He sent me, and that was that was a super huge, uh, generous thing that he did because literally there was no twenty million left because Earl Boy had bought it all. He didn't leave any for anybody else, and James George was like, "I got you." <laughs> Definitely a pretty dude. Every time I use that, I always like bring it out, and I'm like, "This is the James George twenty mil." Uh, all right. So I think we're, we're all right with that. I just want to, um, I almost feel like I want to use a better, uh, stuff, but I don't think I have any better stuff. Let's see. Where's my solvent? I know I've got that stuff way up there. I don't think this was what I was going for. I had another one. Where's my other bottle of solvent? Oh, it's over here. So just make sure if you ever use like any kind of like, any kind of like solvents or whatever, just make sure you use gloves. It's definitely the recommended way to do it. Wear eye protection. You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes. Use hand protection. Boy, that tape is actually really pretty strong, huh?
right. Perfect. Yo, one, what's going on, guy? Hope you're doing well. Three M is definitely um, a more recommended brand of stick tape to use. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a layer of Three M just right along that center section right there. Uh, I'll probably double it up, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to go right there and basically just double it up like that. So before I do that, I guess I figure now that this is kind of here, what I should do is um, I got to drill those other holes. So I need to relocate, not relocate, I got to, um, I got to pop this off, just loosen it just a little bit to get, uh, to get it back into the holes because it got shifted during the crash. So, and that's why those other screws are there. Um, that, that was learned real quick. So, the battery tray kind of got shifted. Just a little. into place and what I'm going to do is um, put this back in Let's see it's nice and tight it's one nice and tight Man, the difference in quality of drivers. These Sabao drivers are really nice. I like them. So what I can do now is um, there were definitely more screws on here that I should have drilled through. And now I literally learned my lesson 
um, from that crash that I, I, I was just lazy, man. I just wanted to get out and rip it. And I decided not to, not to screw those, um, or not to drill these holes. And I paid the price with the battery shift. And even though it didn't launch out, I still paid the price because, well, I mean, now I'm going to actually drill them through. But I should have, I literally just should have, I should have done it right the first time. So, so now I'm actually going to just do it. I'm going to drill it through. So basically just locate that there. Should have done this the first time. Just should have done it the first time. So now I got uh, one, two, three holes now. So this was the seven that I was talking about. There was one, two, three, four, and then obviously five, six, seven. So now once I add these screws on there, it'll lock down that battery tray even more. So now what I need to do is get the right uh, drill bit to now bore from underneath, which I think is this one right here. And I'm not going to countersink them because my chassis is not low enough to slam the ground. So I'm not really worried about, um, not really worried about it hitting, you know, grinding away the screws. Not yet. I'm not, I'm also not going fast enough for it. I think it to be an issue. So, but I just want to make sure I get the right drill bit. So I'm only doing it once. Jeez, all these are the same? What? Can't be. Why did I have all the same drill bits? Why did I literally just pick out all the same? The three that I grabbed. It's the drill bit that I just used today, not even in there? Come on. Yay. No, it's not that one. Is that one? 
All right, well, I guess I'm just using, I guess I am gonna use that. Yep, these are literally all the same. It must be the size that I already used. So literally I'm just gonna literally should be it. So now, it's always a good idea also, take your drill bit out of your chuck. Don't just rely on the thing just sitting there because there is a time when the drill is going to come down and either break the bit or the drill bit's going to slam onto your screen of your phone. That yeah, could be bad. All right. So now, oh no, what happened? Oh, it moved, son of a gun. I didn't notice that it moved on me. Why'd you move? Ah, oh, dang it. You know what? The drill bit went all the way through. No! Dumb. You know, that one's fine. But I think the, I think the drill bit went all the way through. No! Come on. Are you serious? Yeah, it did. Ah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Not good enough. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, see, just like that. It just fell. All right. So somehow, there we go. Back in the place. Good enough. Good enough in my book. Oh my God. RC Disaster Garage. All right. So, what I am going to do is I am going to do the stick tape. Two layers. Do a single layer right there. And just throw another layer right on top of it. Stick from this side. Just give it a cushion. It's literally all I'm doing. Just giving it a cushion. Peel that off. What the heck? So now, the one thing that I wanted to make sure of when I did this was the important thing was being able to access, being able to access, um, the motor mount screw, right? So I had, what I would do is I'd take the driver and just stick it into the furthest screw, make sure it was settled into it. Then take the ESC and basically just put it right up against the driver, which seemed to give me the room that I needed, which I think was right about there. Then I'll take a zip tie and toss that over there. Now I've got a whole bag of zip ties. Good ones, too. These are nice. These are not junk zip ties. So 
because the zip tie basically saved. It saved the day on this thing. Yeah, I wonder, should I put a game changer fan on there right now? I think the I got the game changer mini. Ah, uh, you know what? For now, the ESC is actually doing okay. I don't think I'm pushing it yet. I think once I go to 8S, then I'll, then I'll, but that'll be obviously with a different power system too. So I'm just going to maximize this on 8S, I mean, uh, 6S. And then, um, then I'll just take it from there. So I think that's good. I don't want to restrict flow. So push that over like that. Make sure you cut your zippy ties at a nice steep 45 degree angle. You know, a nice angle cut like that. So I think that is happy right there. That actually feels better than before. So we'll lined up okay on that. That looks good. I can't believe I went all the way through on this stupid tray. Oh well. Whatever. Close enough. It's better now. Better than what it was. Um, now, I'm going to work on banging out that dent. That's when the vice will come into play here. Turn that to the side. We're going to work on this section right here. So basically what I'm going to do is take the chassis, roll it over like this, and I'm going to set up, set it up somehow so that it's kind of flat. So that's actually flat on that surface. And I'm basically going to just pound that down but I'm gonna actually try to pound it and roll it that way. So for this, I'm just going to get out one of my body hammers, and I'm basically just going to body hammer that over. A couple of nicks. I need to do is work it this way. So I'm actually going to mute this because this is probably too loud. There we go. That's better. Less hammer strikes on people's ears. Happy with that. There's a little bit of a wrinkle right there, which I think I'm going to mute again. Mute it, but I'll get out the big hammer.
Nice. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> See, it's good having moderators that know what they're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah, see, without the moderators, I don't know what's going on. Here I am talking, blabbing away, and I didn't realize I was still muted. <laughs> all right, so all I'm doing is I'm just applying uh, some pressure on this piece, right? That's a good amount of pressure, and I'm just going to introduce heat to hopefully make it so that this piece is going to want to now stay. I can't believe I forgot to unmute. I must have like double tapped the thing. I didn't realize I muted it. All right, so. Just gonna apply heat to it. Let it get nice and hot. So that hopefully it will stay in place. That is a plastic piece. I wonder if there's an upgrade to that. That I just don't know about. It's hot. I also did blow out that little pin piece right there, too. Hot stuff, man. So what I should do is get something cold. Looks like that side's got mangled too. That's right. That side got wasted. Nice and hot. Ghost, what's going on, guy? How are you? Mario, what's going on, guy? You're going to get some snow? Good luck. You can keep it. <laughs> Was people like yelling at me? Oh, people were saying no sound. God damn it. <laughs> Here I am going for like a half an hour. No sound. Although there are people that like those kind of videos. No sound. So this is obviously a piece that I'm going to uh, fix as well. I may file it uh, after I after I bend it back up. So let's see. Did my idea work? Hey, look at that. RC guy garage did something that actually worked. So basically what I did is I just heated up the piece uh, so that it would, it would get its uh, flat look back. And now that I did that side, I actually now want to do the other side too. So I'm actually going to do the other side too now. So now I'm going to, now I'm going to flatten the entire piece in the jaws of life here. I'm going to heat it up and compress the plastic. So now the piece will basically be reformed. So I'll heat that, I'll heat that one up.
what? Wow. Hot stuff, man. stuff wow especially the ear the ear is wicked hot all right happy with that pretty sure that that's going to be nice and straight now this piece yeah this one i'll have to uh yeah i don't know what i'm going to do about this piece Man, is this the piece that holds those? No, it's not. This just backs it up. So what I can do is I can just basically just, I'll just heat that up and I'll just kind of like manually um, bend it. Maybe I'll put the, like the pin in and do it like that. We'll see. Hot stuff, man. Ooh. Yeah, that is definitely happier now. That piece is now nice and flat and straight. Perfect. All right, now on to this piece right here. So this piece, I'm basically just gonna, I, you know what, I could put it in the jaws. Flatten it on in the jaws. If you haven't got one of these bench vices, you got to get one. These things are mint. Now, this probably should have a little bit of memory to it. So once I loosen this, it's still going to spring back just the slightest amount. It's very slight. So took most of the curse out. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it on to this side. The rest of it, I'm just going to bang it flat with the hammer. Basically just like this. I'm going to pound on that side right there. So, if you have headphones on, watch out because Thor's ham is coming out. Okay. Pretty good. That's what I want to see. I'm going to see it this way. Does need a strike. Does actually need a strike right in here to get that. There's a little bit of a gap right there. And you can actually see the metal is stressed right there. But I do need to hammer this just a little bit more. So watch your ears. So where I'm going to take the little hammer, I'm going to actually mute it, and I'll, I'll unmute it.
Look at that. Unmuted. Nice. Now the metal gets a certain sound to it. So once it strikes flat, it has a certain uh, tone that it gets once the metal's actually flat. And I wasn't getting that tone on this side. And I could see it. It's just right there. I was actually getting it on this side, but that was because it was obviously hitting this way. So now what I need to do is concentrate my hits right there. So I'm going to mute it again. Look at that. That's on a straight edge. That is totally straight now. No rock. That looks good. So I think I'll file. I'll file that little bad section right there. I'm just going to take a file and just file that. I don't know where my big file is. Where's my big file?
where my file is. So I guess I'm just gonna clean it over. Because it's aluminum. I should be able to soften it. Just by hammering it. Who needs a file? All right, so now what I need to do is I did need to tap it this way just a touch. Good enough. See what he's doing? He's over there talking to her. See? That's what he does. Just goes over and he talks to her. That's what all that beeping is. So what I did want to do was I did want to reform. I think it was this way. A piece going like this. Is it this piece? Uh, no, it's not this piece, is it? Yeah, it is this piece. I think. Yeah, so when I put those little block pieces in there. So it's got these little, um, camber, uh, actually, they're, they're, they're toe, like, how do I explain it? It's almost like giving it, Toe and caster. Because um, these ones are the ones that basically would be for the caster. So what I didn't do, I didn't check. Oh, that's actually fine. Yeah, that's actually all right. I did break off one of the pins on the end there. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Drag van needs a headstone? Get out of here, guy! There ain't going to be no headstone for the drag van. <laughs> Trying to bring that back to life? <laughs> Thank you, JL. Appreciate that. So, when I put these in... I want to make sure that, so this is this way. So what I want to make sure of, yeah. So I'm going to actually put that in now. And that was the shorter of the two or six screws so it had um six screws and the two shorter ones went for this piece here so i'm just going to toss those in right now Oh, it's funky that uh, the piece is actually broken off because that other side's not, there's no alignment for it. <laughs> Headstone. Jerk. <laughs> you get him starting stuff. Drag van will come back, man. You're making me go want to put drag van on the, on the bench now. But I gotta fix this. All right. 
So that's in place. Happy with that. So when I put these in, I'm actually going to want these. I got to see how I want those in there. It's actually sand in there. Angle pretty good, man. The pen actually struck onto there, so I might have to. I might have to put some heat on this. So I think I'm gonna want. I think I'm gonna want it in its lowest position, which is that way. Doing it the same on both. And then I'm going to want it on its inboard position on these ones, which they actually go this way. So this is where, yeah. So the way this is cut out, I think it has to be this way like that and that's what's going to keep those backed up I guess so I should actually looks like it'll actually be all right Chance, oh, what's going on, guy? So I think we're good there. So I want to reinstall my diff. I think I'm going to add a little bit more fluid to there, just a little bit. I don't want to go this way with it. Jail, where is your uh, where's your rally video, man? Not to 
to be in the way while I do this. Just gonna sink this one down so it keeps things in place. Probably should have been prepared and had my driver, but whatever. Forearm strength guy. Feel the burn. All right, that's not the one. Is that the one? That's the one. when I've got to install these arms right into there with the pins. Oh, dog bones too. That'll help. Almost. Happy with that. And top bone going this way. That's good too. Now, a metal pin brace. I'm going to do it this side going that way. Put in my little blocks, which did I literally lose one? Oh, come on. Serious? No, it's right there. I'm going to go this way with it, I think. Is that the side I wanted? Yeah, might as well keep the damage with the damage. Going to the inside with this, which is this way. I want it going inboard. So this one I may have to tap in. Oh, actually it went in nice. Same thing with this. I'm going to go inboard like that. that into place just like that two screws in the back side right there these two little ones here Screw is it then? Oh, I didn't go all the way. No, that's all the way. Oh, it's the long ones. Well, 
was close. It's not that bit either. It's this one. Very happy now. These pins a little tap in. Now that piece. have to apply some heat to it yeah I probably should so what's happened is from the impact this piece is actually uh, angled out so what I should do is apply some heat to it and bring that back in Just apply some heat angle to it. Let it kind of cool. Hot stuff. I'd rather have it have a slight bend that way. That way, when I um, screw it in, It'll apply a little bit of pressure on those little uh, ends. Who put two thumbs down? There's two? It's probably like, yeah, those are those 18. There's only 18 thumbs ups. Wow. Casey, thanks, man. Who put a thumbs down? I don't know, dude. There's people that when I open my mouth, they just don't like the fact that I open my mouth. <laughs> it's all right. Care less. I appreciate the real subscribers, the ones that actually care. That's you guys, not those other pieces of garbage. So it looks like there's a little, oh yeah, there's a little nub piece right there. the pin yeah, good enough <laughs> it's the real subscribers that matter not the pieces of garbage. <laughs> garbage. It's like this thing is going to live another day. Nice. You know what? That actually could use, they could have used some shims. Oh, man. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll address that at another time. Once I hit that 100 mile per hour mark, maybe that's when I'll uh, address that, which hopefully is going to be soon, man. This thing ripped. I mean, I I felt like I was literally just tapping the trigger and getting it to 67, 67, 
66, I think it was. And this thing has been 84, and I already know just from running it on the road today, granted I did crash, but just running it on the road today, I felt just within the trigger and watching how the car reacted. This thing is, it's it's got to be in its, man, I don't, I don't want to like, I don't want to say, an, I, it's got to literally be like, I'm guessing mid to high 90s now. I'm guessing. It's probably more, but I'd rather I'd rather be less than than more. I, I think I want to be surprised. So the chassis brace needs to get in there. So I'm hoping that right now, I'm hoping this is a 100 mile per hour car. I don't know. What do, what do I know? It, it probably isn't because it's just going to take flight. But I'm hoping it is. We'll see. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it tomorrow morning. I'm going to provide it if everything, if everything comes out all right tonight. I am going to rip this thing tomorrow morning uh, for a speed run, early in the morning. See what I can get out of it. I really hope I'm there. I am going to be so psyched if I'm there. I just don't know if the place that I've got. I'm going to have to re be really careful because I'm going to have to do a few runs back and forth and make sure I've got brake. I've got to actually adjust my brake the right way and not do the um, not do the brake curve. Well, actually, I probably should do a brake curve, but I got to do that. Uh, somebody was telling me it's the ABS. Is that little piece that broke off? It's the ABS that I need to um, be mindful of. So I thought a lot more happened to the car than it than it actually did. Oh, well, there was a piece that just ripped off. What the heck was that? Now, how did that piece come off and it didn't come off in the wreck? Oh, it was the body. Oh, it came off. It literally came off the spring. How'd that happen? Oh, that goes right there. Now I see. So what I need to do is put a screwdriver in between to separate the uh, shock thing here. Get that on the coil. Like that. Then rotate this in place. Come on. Get on there. place same thing on this click that in place looking good on the back here so the back's mint I believe the front ended up popping that shock which is nuts that's why I put these um that's why I put these washers on here and the washer washer actually did its job which is insane. Look at that. 
but also I think this one ovalized. So I'm gonna pop it out from underneath. So under here, I'm guessing from the impact that that little, uh, this little piece is probably ovalized now. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> It's just floating in there. Look at that. That's nuts. And that thing wasn't even on there either. Oh, that's a, that one's not on there either. Check that out. The little retainer. It's not even on there. All right. What is that? How do I get a massive blob of Loctite in there? What the heck is that from? I have no idea why there's a massive blob of Loctite in there. Okay. That was my fix um, for the body collapsing into the bumper. So I basically just took double-sided stick tape and a layer of foam and just double-sided stick taped it right to that leading edge and now now the body won't collapse when it's going in the 80s because that's what was happening was it was going into the 80s and it was stuffing the front side of the body in like that and i think it was causing it to raise up so now at least the the front of the nose of the car has just a little bit more rigidity now so now i've got to replace that Hopefully I've got those. God. Oh, is this boot broken? Oh no, it just collapsed. All right. So now I'm going to do is I'm just going to protect the shock shaft. So I can actually grab a hold of it and spin this off. I don't know if I even have these. These are those special ones. See how they have that little notch? I don't even know if I've got these. Out of all the Habao parts, I don't think I've got that. I might just have to put a regular one on. It's not like I need the spring lock.
box of pots. That's actually a carbon fiber piece for this car. That's a VT carbon fiber piece. I should keep that out. Not that I'll ever use it, but some end pieces, but set the right thing. Let's see. There we go. Oh, those are springs. I think that might have pieces in it. Heat sink. Gotta keep that out. Is that it? I'm gonna keep. That's the ST. I don't think that. That's probably not gonna work. The ST, I think, is too. Yeah, the ST is too small. Go. I knew I had it. These are the pieces right here. I'm pretty sure, right? I look a little, look a little thicker, but this is most likely MT. All right, so I have to keep that out. Keep this out of here. A little bit more stout of a piece but as long as this ball will press in 
Yeah, I think that it's gonna work. It's just slightly different, same length. It's just a more stout piece. So I think this is gonna work. Oh, I was looking for this piece right here. Perfect. You know what? That shock feels like it needs oil. Yeah. That definitely needs oil. I didn't think I was going to be putting oil in shocks. I guess I might as well. Yeah, a couple spares. It's just one box. So, you can grab it with a tool down there. But this is loose enough. Ooh, crunchy. That's it. It's a little low. But there is dirt in there. Not in it, but right along the edge. So I'm going to make sure that I go that way with it. So I'm not sure what oil's in there. It's also why I usually keep a socket here because I'll take this and I'll just stick it in one of my sockets, but what do I do with it? Looks like it'll hold it. Make sure that's all the way down. Shock fluid looks mint. Looks nice and clear. We'll look and see what the viscosity is. Seems like a 40. Actually, you know what? That might be a that might be a thirty five, actually. But you know what? See, that sure does seem like a forty. Oh no, it's a forty. Definitely a forty. All right.
So I'm gonna top this off. This shock will be happy. See if we're good there. Brian from Montreal. What's going on, guy? How are you? The what? The passenger side front shock looks like it's wearing on the inside from here. Huh? <laughs> How can you even see it? <laughs> Could you see that that uh, far? Uh, your eyes are way better than mine. I think it's wearing. Are oh, you talking about the tire? Oh, you're talking about the tire. I for some reason I said shock. Um, these tires were improperly done uh, in the beginning, but for the front, um, I'm re-wearing the tires in. I know it looks like it's bad, but these front tires are used, um, and the contact patch is actually flat. So what had happened was, um, whatever car I had these on was when I didn't like really pay attention to, you know, tire wear, <laughs> and there was an excessive amount of. Um, Excessive amount of camber and uh, tow, which wore out. Actually, it was it was both. See, this one's actually worn in a little bit better than that side. I may have to readjust that, but from memory, that was the tire that if you if you see it, it's actually flat when it hits the ground. The contact patch is flat when it hits the ground. Well, actually, it's not. I do have a slight amount of um, camber to it now, but I'm just trying to keep it. You know, I mean, these tires were used anyway. You know what I mean? So, all right. I think we're good on that. That is definitely a happy shock. Way happier than maybe that one. I might have to pop that one out too. So now let's see if this actually really even works. I didn't even check. Does it even thread in? Of course it does. All right. But good eyes though, man. Thank you. It's always good to have people watching out, you know. Definitely good. So did anybody um did anybody catch the grudge match between James and Cletus? It was a grudge match between James and Cletus. Uh, the video dropped today. Ruby is a rocket. Man, I would love to feel what it's like to be sitting in that driver's seat in that car, man. That thing moves. Even James's car is stinking fast. So 
So what I want to check now, I should pop off that shark too, just because. I mean, I'm already here. But this one is definitely happy now. Ruby needs a... No, dude, no. Let... Oh, I know what you're saying, man. Yes, she is wicked spicy, dude. They can tune... What's so nuts... What's so nuts is how you can tune a car now. He can tune it to let it keep its front wheels like... Just right there. Just off the line. He can tune that. And then just obviously have that just power just increase as he's going down the track just to keep those wheels just like just touching. You know what I mean? It's just like, man, that thing, that thing rips so hard. Ah, brings tears to my eyes, guy. The thing is just, I love it. Absolutely love it. My uh, my mother used to race uh, New England Dragway at the quarter mile. 68 Firebird, 400, four-speed. My cousin still races. Well, actually, I think he quit racing now. He's older now. But my, my, my uh, cousin used to race at New England Dragway, too. Ah, look at that, huh? Well, you can't see it. Oh, oh, still sandy. Why is it gritty still? I just got all the grit off. Still some grit on there. But yeah, Ruby's flying, dude. That puts such a huge smile on my face, man. I'm telling you. Love it. Wow, it's 12.30? Holy smokes. <laughs> Too much sauce, right? <laughs> oh, dude. Ruby is on fire. James's car. Oh, my God. Nice and smooth. Oh, it's nice now. Beautiful. I should put that little thing on right now that locks it down. <laughs> Why'd I do that? Guess I might as well get all the dirt out, huh? WL Toy 9112 wired it up to a 24 volt drill battery. Oh my God. It was fun, but it did catch the ice. You know what? Did you get it on film? That's awesome. It caught the ESC on fire. That's great. So those are the things you want to see on film. Dude, those Texas 427s, man. 
I wouldn't mind. Those things, uh, those things probably cost a pretty penny. <laughs> My God. More money than that would get. All right. That's going to fight me, isn't it? Yep. Definitely is. There we go. Ah, that's what I didn't think of. It still works. Still works. That's all right. Ah. It's different. Because... So I should actually switch the other side so it's even. It's it's actually, I think it's settled down all the way into it. I didn't even think of that. So I wonder if, I wonder if I should use, nah, I shouldn't use that retainer because then that would make the spring even weaker. Yeah, I'm just gonna roll with that. That means I can't use these little things. Weight savings. Pop it off. Who needs it? Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to do the same thing to the other side then. Yeah. That's nice. All right. That's actually way happier. All right. thing. No, it's not hitting. I think I'll leave it like that. I probably should have actually um, went with a thicker shock fluid, but I'll just roll with it. I'll probably have to stiffen up the shock again. And actually, while I'm thinking about it right now, how about if I put the right size screw in? Because I think these are too long. I got these screws right here. Which, I guess these aren't short enough. Like they're almost the same stinking size. Nope, they're a little shorter. That'll work. It's getting the gold treatment. And gold treatment with a little Loctite. Gold treatment. those backwards because the way they're sitting, they're dirt traps I'm gonna flip that around that's a dirt trap right now so if I 
take that and spin that around, now it's not a dirt trap. The only thing about this car, though, is this is a touring car. So I've got a kind of like a geometry issue, I think, in the first place. Um, it sits really high. So I've kind of... Um, I'd rather have my front a little bit soft so that I get some droop. Do you know what I mean? So it stays low down. Just that's just what I'm coming across with this thing. Now don't forget, when you have the silver screw, which this one does have, the thread is just the exact opposite. So righty tighty lefty loosey does not work. Remember that. Get those screws, man. sounds fine but I gotta change that eyelid anyway so that it matches plus get all the dirt and stuff out of here I've got dirt on there Sharper turns. Ouch. Oh, smokes. Look at that. That little bottom cap unscrewed. How'd that happen? This one was a little bit better.
So that's happy. Showing. Seems happy. What is hitting this? 
Seems like something was hitting. Am I hitting the sway bar? Feels like it's almost hitting the sway bar. Brace. is actually hitting the brace. So I have to like rotate the coil to get an open area so it doesn't hit. That's weird. to relocate that I think I'm gonna have to relocate son of a gun I don't know why it's doing that that end must just be that much longer that side's not hitting but it feels like this side is binding so I am going to have to pop that off. Son of a gun. That means something is out of alignment. What the heck? Wrenches. Come on. Nope. Son of a gun. Kill show wrench is nowhere to be found here.
ain't gonna work. Cause I ain't got the right wrench. Sweet. Where did that stinking Kyosho wrench go? Come on. You gotta be kidding me here. Mm -hmm. Like three of those stupid things. You think I could find one of them? Nope. It's probably in the truck. Why is this thing trying to annoy me right now? Lose my patience. Just a little bit. rubbing prior too. So what is that like an eight millimeter? Throw stuff off. Uh, comes that one. Awesome. Loctite's already bonding. Sweet.
So I'm going to change. So hard right now. I wonder if literally something got slammed in front here. This is not happy. from it but the only thing I don't like is I most likely raised up my front end
It's just that much thicker. That's the issue. Son of a gun. All right, well, whatever. It's staying there. Now it's staying. Let's have to deal with it. What was I doing here? I don't think anything. I think the only thing I didn't like was the slop. I could definitely shim that out. I could definitely shim that out. This way, slide that in. See the 
same one. Yeah. Same one. that side and this side I think seems like that's it almost forgot Still has a little bit of stuff. Hammer time. <laughs> oh, it was hammer time. is too thin. I need a thicker one. Or too thin. So I think what I'm gonna do is do two thin, one thick. See if that works. That almost seems like it's too much now. It does seem like it might be too much. I'll see in a second. That that's nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. I like it. Now let's make sure that that's in all the way though. Need a little tap of the hammer on that right there.
<laughs> what was that? 80 mile pro reverse entry into a parking lot. <laughs> Oh my god. I think I'm happy now. That rear end was never like that. That's mint. All right. Do I bother checking the rear shocks? Do I even waste my time? Feel fine. They feel just fine. One extra screw. Why do I have one extra screw? What did I forget? Did I forget something here? What's the one extra screw for? <laughs> the heck is the one extra screw for? Oh <gasps> no! No! <laughs> I know what the one extra screw is for. <laughs> yeah, guy. Oh, you idiot. All right. <laughs> well, I guess it'll be easy to kind of pull it apart. What the heck? Oh, for the love of God. Know what the extra screw is? Son of a gun! Extra screw is that's for sure. At least it's easy to get to. <laughs> oh my god, it's for that. And it's not even that bit because it's this one. Boy, that was close. Game changer, what's going on, guy? Hope you're doing well. There we go. That's better. Son of a gun. Can't believe that. And now. And even my little bushing thing came out, or whatever it is, not bushing. Come on, a mess. My little drive shaft, little helper here. My drive shaft slop helper popped out of its little spot. Oop, did it again. Come on, stay in there. There you go. Go to your home.
it's not even facing what it's supposed to be looking at. Boy, that was close. There we go. Now it's happy. Yeah. Putting those shims in there definitely took out a lot of that slop. Now you can see the battery tray actually has the appropriate amount of screws that it's supposed to have. The little pieces are countersunk inside like it was. So what I had done was I added two extra screws because it should have been a third, but my drill bit went too far through because I was just being, I was being in a rush. I just wanted to get it done, and I'm paying the price by not having a screw that works. I could take a, a bigger screw and throw it in, but I think we're happy now. At least we've got six screws instead of four. At least we've got two more to kind of hold that battery tray on. In the event of another crash, I did realize that even though I had, uh, I had a, a mid- to upper 50 degree day, I believe. It may have been a little bit warmer. And initially I had gone into this saying, I'm not going to need to put on my game changer fan because, well, I just assumed I was just going to do a couple of light hits. I wasn't going to do anything, you know, real, but that inner voice or whatever got the better of me. And I ended up just doing something really stupid. And just squeezing the trigger, I don't know what was on my mind. I think I was just excited that I had the car back. <laughs> so I'm excited that I had the car back and then I crashed it. So, but I guess the crash kind of um, showed me a couple things that I had been neglecting. A couple things that were loose um, that now are straightened up. Uh, I did never, never did Loctite. All four of my motor screws were never Loctited. So I never Loctited the actual mount. And I actually never Loctited uh, this piece, the actual uh, chassis mount, the motor chassis mount. And I also never Loctited the actual motor to um, the motor mount itself, that, that piece that connects to the motor. Now everything's Loctited. Uh, front suspension... I realized by taking stuff apart that I did have an ovalized piece. Uh, I did see that actually first. Now what I put in is I put in a much beefier piece. So instead of running this anemic little piece here, now I'm running this beef and spice right here. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the two. So this is obviously from a monster truck or the MT. And this is, you know, whatever. This is just the part that is pointless. Now it's running these. Within doing that, I had to change a little bit of my front geometry very slightly. But you know what? I don't care. This thing's going to fly now. So that's all that matters. Um, I, I don't even know. Like, there's the possibility that front shock was already an issue. And I just literally just didn't pay attention i'm not paying attention i have to um i'm just i gotta get away from that just get out there and rip it i mean you should but i gotta get away from a little bit of that get out there and rip it um so that i'm not causing myself uh issue oh, come on 
So I'm not causing myself issue that's going to potentially cost me um, more. Because as I increase in speed, it's also going to increase in um, parts expense. So parts expense is going to increase. And learning my own limitations, maybe listening to myself a little bit more and taking it easy more with the trigger. Stop being so trigger happy. <laughs> like, I, like apparently I was. Uh, found out a couple of other loose things. We had a hub over here that was loose that has nothing to do with the accident. The accident was literally all on this, all on this side, even though I did break a wheel on this side. That had nothing to do with the fact that this hub was loose. This hub was loose just from driving, just from lack of paying attention, lack of like maintenance. Everything is now, everything feels nice. Uh, these arms were not this tight now. Now that I shimmed them, I got three shims on this side, two shims on this side. That took care of that. Uh, the chassis is now uh, basically straight. I wouldn't say laser straight, but uh, I was able to take that curse out of here. So we had actually smacked it up going this way, had to take the sway bar, channel locks, crank it down, uh, take it a little bit past uh, what it was. And now it's, it's that, it's that mint now. Now it's mint. So I am, I am actually very, um, I'm happy with this VT. I know this thing is going to move now. Um, it's going to go. And I'm excited to see this thing go now. Yeah. This is only running on 6S. I am going to have to throw new tires on the back now just because I want the back to be balanced. I probably will throw... Well, you know what? <laughs> it would be cool too bad I couldn't put the, throw the Hell Yeah Brothers on there. But... um. Obviously, we've got some Hell Yeah Brothers going on here. I'm doing them in uh, yellow so far and white. I can basically do it in whatever color. Um, so I've got them perfectly laid out for these. This one, the lettering is just a little too big. And the way I realized that was while it may fit the arc, What's happening is that the top edge of the lettering would actually wear out, I think, too quickly. Where this lettering right here, you can see this lettering more fits the tire. This looks good, but this also looks good too. And what I think I realized is once you start like wearing on the thumb, so it's almost like a it's almost like a wear indicator. Once the thumb starts dissing up here and it's just a fist. It's pretty much time to go ahead and replace your hell yeah brother tires. So <laughs> once the thumb is gone and all you got left is a fist, it's time to replace. But um, I'm going to have to switch out, not to these ones. These are actually silver, as you can tell by the, the way the tire looks. Um, I am going to have to switch out. We did crack this rim. So that's why it's got an X on it. Uh, it cracked so well. So it's actually still connected on the back side, like the rib is still actually connected on the back side, but it totally snapped like this whole front section snapped and there was pine needles jammed inside the crack. So you can actually still see this pine needles right, right inside of there. I think you can see in there. Can you see the pine needles in there? See the pine needles still stuck in there? Isn't that nuts? So, yeah. Oh, I think, uh, yep, my wife is telling me to go let the dogs out. I'll be right back.
So anyways, yeah, I think that's about it. I think the VT is definitely uh, going to be happier now. It would be awesome to run these. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Um, but these ones right here, that definitely fits pretty mint. Initially, what I was doing... I was I was gonna do a stencil, so you could basically take the stencil and overlay it over the entire tire, and then you could paint it whatever you want. But then I realized, ah, you know what? The lettering itself actually looks so much more crisp than trying to do like a stencil. So I hang I hung on to these just because um, I don't know why, but yeah. So this is my, this is actually one of the bad felony ties. That's why I did it on there. So yeah, whatever. Thanks, Arma. I don't know what your, your guy's problem with your quality is, but starting to get annoying. Parts and quality, what the heck? So this car is definitely, I think, a lot happier now. ESC is locked back down. Now we have a proper battery tray. Um, the GPS went for another ride on the pavement. I can't believe the thing didn't get ran over. Um, what else? No extra screws. Uh, things are locked tighted. The mesh is good. That's my mesh. And I think this thing is probably ready. I'll have to do like, you know, I'll have to do like another alignment. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should put some Hell Yeah Brothers on there. They actually look pretty cool though, wouldn't it? You know? Look at that. Come on. You know you want a set. Look at that. Hell Yeah Brother. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I also got the, um, I've also been doing, uh, because obviously the, the felony is, sorry, the felony is a second generation Camaro, F body, Firebird, whatever you want to call it. So this is actually the bird. It's, it's slightly stretched. And I think I brought the wings in. So that it actually fits the felony uh, hood. Absolutely perfect. So that's it on the felony right there. It literally comes right from the, the leading edge of the actual uh, separation of the hood. Uh, from the upper valance. And goes like right before the actual air vents and it just it just fits mint i had it so that it was kept away from the edges of the hood just a touch on both the left and right side but i mean obviously the different colors that you can do with the firebird i, I thought that looked mint you know that is definitely that is a cool look and i was gonna go with yellow to kind of stay with the yellow theme like i've got going on here jags obviously is in yellow uh, obviously the hell yeah brothers in yellow are going to be on the back of here. Uh, I don't know what the fronts are going to be. The front might be hell yeah too. I'm, I'm not sure. They might just stay hoons. I'm really not sure. It might just end up being the rears, but, um, I also do have, so this vinyl cutter, I got to tell you, look how small that bird is. That's how small I can get the bird. Now doing this one's tough. I've got several different sizes. So obviously I've got the hood. These would be like um, these would be like the side the side panels, the sail panels on the outside, just like the original. Um, obviously, I can't get them any smaller than that. But I've been doing different types of uh, cutouts. Obviously, that's an upscaled version. That one I actually did the reverse, and I cut out the insides and left the larger pieces. Um, same thing right there, couple birds, 
Same thing. I did basically the opposite when I picked it out. So more this one, you have the larger flames. This one, you have more of the cutout, more of like a detailed design. That almost would be like a like a door one or whatever. I just I'm just trying out different uh, ones. But um, they they came out mint. I mean, look at that. Look at the detail. How does that thing do that? How does it make such detail? It's crazy trying to pick that out. You got to use like a razor blade. But I have a whole ton of hell yeah brother for the tires. Uh, right now, I think these ones are for, if I remember right, these ones are the small, yeah, these ones are the smaller lettering for the smaller tires, I believe. I think these ones are these ones, maybe. Maybe not. I don't remember. No, these ones are for these ones. Yeah, these are actually the larger ones. So, hell yeah, brother. A whole stack of them. I've also... Did I fix the infraction? Yeah, I think the infraction's 100% too. Oh, looks like the thing the stream die again. You kidding me? Did the stream go out? Oh no, it's it's going. Anyways. No, I'm still here. Right, bald eagles are gonna be flying soon. You know it, guy, Freedom Factory, right? <laughs> so I gotta let the dogs in now. Now they're barking to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be quiet, you. All right, I gotta go let the dogs back in. All right. Well, I pretty much think that wraps up tonight. Late night live with RC Guy Garage. Shouldn't even call it late night. It's literally almost two o'clock in the morning. And I got to wake up at five. <laughs> that works, right? That works. All right. So... Yeah, I'm, um, this VT, this VT is going to move. I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta be careful. I gotta go, I gotta go easy. I can't do this. I can't do what I did today. That, that was, that was point blank. Just, that was just dumb, man. That was really dumb. Cost me. It cost me. It cost me tires. You know, it did, it did make me realize that, you know, I haven't been, yeah, I haven't been doing stuff like I probably should, you know, checking things after running. I, I put a, I put a few passes on this car and I haven't, I haven't checked nothing. I didn't check no bolts. I didn't check no screws. I didn't check my lug nuts. You know, I just, just kept ripping it, you know, head bolts are coming apart, you know, <laughs> The, the, um, the fan belt was getting loose. You know, I just, pulleys were squeaking away and I just kept on going. So anyways, like I always say, I say, get out there and rip it. Uh, the fun part 
I, I do, I do enjoy, I do enjoy working on the cars. I mean, it's just like working on regular cars. Same thing. I, I enjoy that. There's a certain amount of, you know, non-enjoyment that you get too. Um, but even though I crashed this thing, I, I still had a smile on my face. Number one, I couldn't believe that how little amount of damage I want to say there really was in reality. Um, I mean, 50, it's the, the, the speedometer said 52 and it's got to, it had to have been pretty close to that because I was actually into the trigger, like not full, but I was into the trigger when it spun out and it, it spun out and literally hit the rock. Like, so what did it lose? Like two miles an hour. So probably, you know, the rear end of that car hit that rock at probably 50. So that's not too bad. I mean, I don't know how fast I run. I probably run like seven miles an hour. <laughs> I don't even know. But I don't even think I'd want to hit a tree with my body at seven miles an hour. I don't know how fast I run. I don't even know. It's It's been a while. I don't, I don't, especially with the couple of COVID pounds that I've got on me now. Yeah, I'm running a little bit slower right now. But that's that's all gonna change. <laughs> gotta get this, gotta get this COVID weight out of here. Plus all the other weight too. So I don't know. I'm having a blast. And I suggest if if you don't do like speed stuff, just try it. You really might like it. It it's it it lights a fire under me, in me, whatever. When when you rip it, like like how I'm starting to do, it, it pushes you. It might push you in the wrong direction sometimes. You got that little, you got that little, you know, guy on your shoulder going, "Go ahead, guy. Nothing's gonna happen. Just do it." You know. And then you get the other one going, "Just don't do it. It's, it's all bad stuff. Listen, listen to my side of the story." But the other guy's going, "Come on, guy. What, what's gonna happen? What's the worst thing that could happen?" what you crash so what you know how to fix cars <laughs> right so all right mitchell we'll see you later man let's go ahead and jump into the chat real quick here who we got got gucci we got stl uh let's see we got game changer rob i think robbie's here robbie's rc is here earl moorhead uh oh, the yawns are coming. It's only like it's only like six o'clock in the afternoon for Earl right now. Not quite, but what time is it for Earl? Eleven? No, yeah, eleven. For you Cali people, and then for you UK people, if you're still here, you're out of your mind. It's it's like oh, actually, it'll only be like seven. No. It's, Eight, eight o'clock for you guys, or somewhere around there. <laughs> Who else is here? See, I can't operate the computer because I need both my. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I can. I got the wheel. Who else is here? It's t uh, 22 people. Oh, that's not too bad. Think about it. Two o'clock in the morning, still 22 people. It's pretty good. I don't know what the peak amount of people were. Robbie, I didn't even see you, man. Sorry about that. I see you You, you put the RC Guy Garage thing on there. So I, I don't even know who's here. It says there's like 21 people, but I only see literally like four people talking. Ralph, what's going on, guy? You just lurking? Just hanging out? RC Guy, the inner voice is a hit, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, it was funny. Somebody was saying that um, the the term or word guy is now catching on it should it's a word that i've always used come on guy i call girls and guys guy so i always have so it's not why is it not scrolling now oh there we go all right so anyways i will be clipping on uh like i said because i realized this is the, uh, these are the inspected V2s, man. 
this was uh for this thing to like just snap right onto the car this was a hit i i actually really i really didn't think that i was gonna need fans today um i, I really didn't think i'd i'd you know, do enough passes that my motor would start to get warm. Um, but definitely the gearing that I've got in it is definitely a different gearing now. But I forget what I am. 20, 27 tooth pinion and a 33 tooth spur. I think that's what it is. I think I'm a 33... 33 spur 27 pinion is what this thing is running right now. And I don't know what the math is. 6S, 2000 KV. Somebody probably already knows it. But it feels like this car is in the mid to high 90s now. Is is just my general guess. I really don't know. Um, this is my learning process uh, with this. And uh, that's why I'm saying if you don't speed run, if you just... If you just you know, like four wheel drive bashing kind of stuff. That's that, that, that was me too. I, you know, I like it. It's easy. It's forgiving. Hitting a tree, hitting dirt, whatever. It's definitely way more forgiving than running on the road. Running on the road at these speeds, there's nothing forgiving about it. You make one mistake and it literally could all be over. I mean, these things take off. They do like from Top Gun. You know, when Top Gun, when the when the jet went into that flat spin, they hit rocks. They hit cracks in roads. They hit little tiny pebbles and launch up into the air. There's so much, there's so much involved with speed. Pavement, curbs, brick, uh concrete none of it is forgiving a dirt mound grassy you know whatever conditions even hitting a tree is more forgiving than hitting a wall hitting a wall there's there ain't no bounce hitting a tree it's still soft you know you could you could take your fist right take your fist and go ahead and punch a tree okay now go and take your fist and punch a stone wall with the same force what's going to hurt more guaranteed it's going to be the stone wall is going to hurt more so so much less forgiving <laughs> oh my god but but it's also keep in mind safety so what something that you guys don't realize is that anytime i go out off my property okay i have a fire extinguisher with me you might not see it but it's with me every single time and I never used to do that, but it was only when I started doing lipo battery stuff, you know, like years ago. I don't even know how many years ago it was. Two? Lipo batteries, man, it's not to put out the lipo fire itself, the lipo battery. It's to put out any fire that's surrounding. Um, yeah, just make sure you're safe. You know, keep that in mind. Have a fire extinguisher with you. If you're on somebody else's property or property that's not yours, even if you're on your own property, careful. You know, you, you crash into a tree and a lipo battery ignites a bunch of dry leaves on fire. And then like you just light up your whole neighborhood. <laughs> People aren't going to be happy with you. So, all right, I'm out of here. I always say I'm out. You should get out too. And you should, you should try it. If, if, if people come in here and you don't know anything about the hobby, get into it. It could be fun. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a good side thing to, to do. So 20 people, 28 thumbs ups. Is there anybody in here right now that hasn't given a thumbs up? Let's see. Is that number going to move? Come on. There's got to be a couple of people in here. that have not given a thumbs up. 20 people. There's 20 people in here. 29. Bam, who was it? Who was it? It was Earl, wasn't it? <laughs> who was it? Come on. Say say who you were. Say who you were. It was you? Who was it? But burn. Burn one. No, bum. Does it say burn or bum? I can't read it. 
Does it say bum one got <laughs> bum one got beats? That's a funny name, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, hundred miles per hour. Ah, oh, game changer. You know what, man? Here's the crazy part, dude. Are you are you ready for your car? Oh my god. What what you've got is faster than any well, it's faster than anything that I've got built right now. We know my limitless is on the way, and that car as built far exceeds my ability to drive, man. You better be careful with that bad boy. That's that's uh you're gonna love that thing, man. I'm telling you. Number of reasons why you're gonna love it. Trust me. Between Earl and I, we know you're gonna love that car. So be careful with it. <laughs> so 31! So there were a couple people in there. Right. All right. I'm out. All right. I'm I do I gotta get to sleep. I, I gotta wake up in like three and a half hours. So um yeah, it's always a blast. I might do a COVID coffee tomorrow. It all depends upon my schedule. I got to look and see what's going on. Uh, there is the possibility that it won't, but you never know. It might be a COVID and coffee. I mean, COVID's still around, right? We still got to drink coffee. As a matter of fact, I still got a little bit of coffee left. I never get rid of my coffee unless I brush my teeth. Once I brush my teeth, yeah, you know what? Coffee doesn't taste all that great. All right. Well, I will see you guys later, maybe tomorrow at some point. Um, I don't think I have anything for a video. I think I literally put out, did I put out three videos today or something? I think I put out two videos and one live stream plus this one. So this one went from, how long, how long are we on here for? Almost three and a half hours. Wow. Not bad. Habao's killing it. So there's another Habao that I've got. I don't know if you guys remember. I've got one more Habao speed car. So be building that soon too. But I got to do my limitless first. That's that's a very important car to me, which is why I have the extra body. I know you can't see the extra body, but there's a spare body that's under that. I have a spare body for a reason because the other, the actual limitless and the body I'm actually leaving that body alone, even though it's the same dang thing, but in my head, it's not. So that was actually a gift. So sometimes you got to keep certain things. That's why I bought a whole body for it. Isn't that crazy? Just, I mean, it's a body. It's an RC car, but it's got a certain meaning to it. So anyways, Robbie, we'll see you later, man. Do the inner voice. <laughs> I can't do the inner voice thing. I, I, I'm too. I'm too tired for that. <laughs> I'd have to. I'd have to like turn the camera away and then do the the voice to the the thing right here. See this thing right here. This is that. This is that uh, CCXRC Tony microphone thing going on here. You got to get the voice down low, and then you've got like basically you've got a. You got to eat the microphone. I can't do it with the hat on. You got to like basically almost like eat the microphone to do the voice. So, all right. And uh, yeah, I got to do a little echo. Uh, that's all through the software. I can't do the echo. So, all right. I'm out. Thank you guys for coming for Late Night Live with RC Guy Garage. This was Damage Report. RC Speed Curve to get that, to get that perfect pass part two. Because I am working on starting to hopefully refine a more perfect pass. So, we'll see. And people out there, you know why I'm saying that. If you don't, you got to get with it. All right. See you guys later. Thanks for coming.